everyone, I'm Anna, cinephile host, and today I will talk about the movie A River Runs Through It, a poetic movie about a river in the wild that binds McLean family with the fly fishing hobby that they share. It was the writer's attempt to learn more about his brother's death that called him to write a novel of the same name. The novel was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize. Let's watch the 1993 Best Cinematography Oscar winner, A River Runs Through It. It was 1937. The McLean brothers, Norman and Paul, grew up in Missoula, Montana, with their father, Presbyterian minister John, from whom they learned a love of fly fishing for trout in the Blackfoot River. They learned to cast using a ticking metronome. The boys become accomplished fishermen as their father wished. Norman and Paul are home taught and must follow the strict moral and educational code of their father. But after they grow older, it becomes clear that Norman is more disciplined and studious, while Paul is fun-loving, wild and the more accomplished fisherman. Upon returning home after being away for six years to study at Dartmouth College, Norma tells his father, John, that he's interested in teaching. And did you find that experience rewarding? That is to say, do you feel this could be your calling? My calling? Meanwhile, Paul has become a reporter at a newspaper in nearby town Helena. But he has angered many of the locals for falling behind on payments to Lolo Casino, where a bar is a cover for gambling and prostitution. He is also dating an Indian woman, Mabel, who is deemed inferior by the community. One day, Paul is arrested after fighting a man who has insulted her. And Norman goes to get Paul and Mabel out of jail. The same year, Norman meets Jesse at the July 4th dance. After Norman and Jesse go on several dates, they found out that both of them have an incompetent brother. Norman's brother Paul frequents a casino, no matter how hard Norman tried to persuade Paul to get out, but Paul always assures him that everything will be fine. And Jesse's brother Neil is falling in the dungeon of alcohol. Jesse tries to help Neil to get back to normal with her love, but proud Neil always double talks. Jesse and Norman even had a fight for cocky Neil. But soon after, kind Jesse asks for the thoughts of Norman about the same question Norman has for Paul. Why is it the people who need the most help won't take it? I don't know, Jess. One day, Norman shows Jesse a letter from the University of Chicago. It's a job offer for an English literature teaching position. Norman asks Jesse to marry him. Then he tells his family about the great news. But when Norman tells Paul about this job offer and marriage proposal, Paul says that he will never leave Montana. Before leaving, Norman, Paul and their father go fly fishing one last time. Paul catches a huge rainbow trout and John proudly tells him what a wonderful fisherman he has become. Soon after the fishing trip, one day before Norman leaves for Chicago, he receives a phone call from the police, who tell him that Paul has been found beaten to death in an alley. Norman goes home and tells his parents. Norman remembers that he chanted poetic verses, Though nothing can bring back the hour of splendor in the grass, of glory in the flower, we will grieve not, rather find strength in what remains behind. In the primal sympathy which having been must ever be. In the soothing thoughts that spring out of human suffering. Years later, Mrs. McLean, Norman, Jesse and their children listen to a sermon being given by John, who dies soon after. For it is true we can seldom help those closest to us. Either we don't know what part of ourselves to give, or more often than not, the part we have to give is not wanted. And so it is those we live with and should know who elude us. But we can still love them. 
we could love completely without complete understanding. The closing scene is of elderly Norman once again fishing on the same river with director Robert Redford's sound narrating the final lines from the original novel. Eventually, all things merge into one. And a river runs through it. Why is it the people who need the most help won't take it? I don't know, Jess. Is our home? Though nothing can bring back the hour of splendor in the grass, of glory in the flower, we will grieve not, rather find strength in what remains behind. In the primal sympathy which having been must ever be, in the soothing thoughts that spring out of human suffering. In the faith that looks through death. Thanks to the human heart by which we live. Thanks to its tenderness, its joys, its fears. To me, the meanest flower that blows. Can, can give thoughts, thoughts that do often lie too deep for tears. And so it is those we live with and should know who elude us but we can still love them we can love completely without complete understanding eventually all things merge into one and a river runs through it The world's greatest time floods as the Blackfoot River runs through the eternal memory of Norman and the long-lasting story of the movie. I don't know about you, but I find the title of the movie to be quite symbolic and touching. I'm your host Anna and thanks for watching today's episode. You'll find more on Funday website. See you next time!